Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Liberty. We're excited that you're here. Let's, let's stand this morning as we start our worship service. Excited to see all of you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read from Psalms 107 this morning. Uh, verses 8 and 9. Actually, I'm going to read 7 too. He led them straight to safety, to a city where they could live. Let them praise the Lord for his great love and for the wonderful things he has done for them. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. Let's, let's worship this morning. Oh, I searched the world, but it couldn't fill me. And man's empty praise and treasures that fade never enough. Then you came along and put me back together. Turn grace into God. 
get my soul Remember Redemption's here Where your blood was spilled For my ransom Everything I once held dear I can't you this morning and we lift up your name and we do ask that you will lead us to the cross and father as we worship together this morning we pray that you will prepare our hearts as we get into the word lord and as as you speak to us lord through pastor i just pray that you will open our hearts open our minds to what it is that you have for us lord and we we worship you this morning we open our hearts to you this morning and we want to sing so much of your holiness lord in jesus name amen Shall rise. 
for your worship this morning. Please be seated. Well, good morning. Kids should be happy. They've only got three days of school this week, so that's good. If you brought your Bibles, go ahead and turn to um, Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. Uh, we're going to be landing there in just a minute. Um, a couple of quick things uh, to let you know. By the way, that picture, I put it up there last week and forgot to tell you, uh, that cross there is actually formerly called the prayer tree at Hidden Acres. And this was a huge, huge oak tree. You can tell they were able to make a cross out of its trunk. And, uh, but uh, this is very significant. Why do they call it the prayer tree? Because in 1977, when they were, the district was deciding, are we going to buy these, uh, this 500-plus acres of land for a camp, it was at this tree that they prayed. And then they did a campaign, buy an acre, so they wanted 600 people to buy an acre, and within six months, it happened. And uh, that is why Hidden Acres is here, is a group of individuals being led by the Spirit, prayed at this tree, and then after their prayer, decided, yep, this is the place we want to be, uh, which became Hidden Acres, our district camp. So anyway... Um, by the way, uh, offering, uh, we don't uh, pass the plate anymore. Um, because of uh, the situation we're in, but um, there's white boxes at the uh, back uh, by each door. You can do it the uh, check way. Uh, you can uh, go online and on the home page, you know, there's a box that says give online. You can click that. And I have no clue about this, but now you can text to give, all right? Just look at the announcements that are emailed to you every week, and you can figure out how to text to give as well. Uh, no Sunday school today. We've got a lot of teachers and helpers that are just at the tail end of a, a quarantine, whether they had COVID or a family member. And so uh, hopefully after Thanksgiving, uh, we might be able to reevaluate, but uh, certainly uh, are not going to be able to do that today. Uh, office will be closed this week. Typically, my uh, Friday is a work day for me, but um, I will actually be spending Thanksgiving and Friday and Saturday helping my brother. He's getting his knee replaced. And... Uh, uh, goodwill, good works can lead to goodwill, which can lead to the good news. And so I'm going to uh, try to serve him. Luckily, our, one of our children lives in Marshalltown as well, so we'll be able to do Thanksgiving there. Um, by the way, thanks. Uh, you notice these uh, boxes over here and over here. Thank you to all those who made boxes for our Operation Christmas Child. Um, you notice the trailers that were parked, uh, uh, you know, you're saying, what on earth is someone parking their trailers for? Because after this service, we're going to ask some of you big, burly men and women, um, we take those, yeah, yeah, you all, you, we're going to get like 150 volunteers now. I think that's great. But you see those brown boxes? Those boxes, the, the Christmas boxes go into those brown boxes, and then loaded on the trailer, we take those to Atamwa, where a lot of other places bring them, and that's sort of a hub. So we're going to need people to, uh, to just to grab some of the boxes and put them in the trailers um, after worship, if you're willing to do that. Last, certainly not least, thanks for uh, wearing your masks. Uh, appreciate it. I think maybe we'll have a contest uh, sometime, which who has the most original one. Um, maybe we'll have the, an artistic one where you can sort of paint something on your mask. But anyway, I'm, I'm thankful that I'm not Velma. Velma is from Scooby-Doo. She's the girl in Scooby-Doo that has big honking glasses. Well, um, she loses her glasses. She's blind as a bat. Um, luckily, I don't have to wear a mask. I only have to use these to read, so uh, they won't fog up. But uh, we got a letter this, uh, this past week from Marion County Health Department. And uh, number one, it uh, was addressed uh, uh, dear religious organizations, and of course, uh, uh, Christianity is not a religion, so I didn't think it applied to us. Uh, religion is man's attempt to reach God. Christianity is God reached down to save us through Christ. But anyway, I read it anyway. And uh, basically, they were just encouraging, you know, we appreciate if you encourage people wearing masks. We appreciate you encourage social distancing. And then they said we would, 
we would highly encourage you to refrain from some of the following activities during your service. And one of the things they said is we would ask that during your worship service you refrain from chanting. Okay? So um, those of you who are Gregorians out there, I'm sorry. But uh, George, I know you're going to come up here and pray after the sermon. And you are going to lead us in a chant. But in honor of uh, their request, um, you got to wait a few weeks to do that. All right? So anyway, let's pray and let's dig into God's word. Lord, as that slide says, blessed be the Lord's glorious name forever. May the whole earth be filled with your glory. And Father, that is our prayer. Lord, I pray that during this season of thanksgiving, it's certainly appropriate for us to be thankful for the many gifts that you have given us, the gift of family, the gift of friendships, the gift of many things. But Lord, I also pray that we would not forsake looking to you and giving you thanks for the millions of abundant blessings that you have bestowed upon us through Christ. And so, Father, we, uh, we come to you this morning in an attitude of thanksgiving and just pray that as we dig into your word, we will be reminded of how truly, truly blessed we are as followers of Christ. And Lord, may... Uh, May that uh, blessing just resonate in our minds and our hearts throughout the coming week and even the coming months. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Last week, I, I'm just doing a two-week series. Basically, it's uh, called something I sort of annually do. Uh, I call them my Thanksgiving sermons. And uh, we've got Thanksgiving coming up. And uh, last week, we looked at two psalms, Psalm 61 and Psalm 91. And I'm going to show you Psalm 91 on the screen. And uh, I'm going to ask you to read that out loud. It's not a chant. I'm just asking you to read it out loud, all right? So let's read this uh, Psalm 91, verses 1 through 2 out loud. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, you are my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. And then a couple verses later, verse 4, read with me. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. So only three verses, and you've got all these descriptions of who God is. Oh, Lord, you're a shelter. Lord, I just have to dwell in the shadow of you, and I'm protected. Refuge, a fortress. You hide me under your wings, you are a shield, and last week we talked about that, that passage about the wings, and you see the picture of the eagle, and uh, when, when I read that passage, that's what instantly comes to my mind, but actually it's a deeper concept than that. It's the image of the, the, the cherubim in the ark, these golden, beautiful, winged beings, cherubim, and their, their wings come together, and beneath those wings in the ark is where the high priest once a year would come with the blood sacrifice and pour it on what was called the mercy seat. And so basically what this passage is saying is those who dwell in the presence of God will be under his wings. Basically, you will be at his, experience his mercy and his grace. It's not out for anybody. It's only those who are able to come to Christ, which is only able to do so through Christ. And then there's also an action word. It's not just anybody who knows Christ. The passage says, he who dwells in the shelter of the home. There's an action word there, which basically means the mercy seat represents the very presence of God. And if you want to dwell in the very presence of God and, and experience his shelter and his shadow and his refuge, you've got to dwell there. You've got to actively pursue the presence of God in your life. And so the, the, the more actively you pursue that, the more actively you experience that, the more you will experience God as your shelter, a shadow, a refuge, a fortress, and a shield. And so this Thanksgiving 
because of all the chaos, because of all the uncertainty, because of all the problems going on around there, I just sat back and I said, you know, one of the things that I'm thankful for is that during crazy, uncertain, unsettled times, I have a God who invites me to experience him as I go into his presence as a shelter, as a shadow, as a refuge, as a fortress, as a shield, hiding in his presence under his wings. And uh, during these times, boy, we definitely need to be reminded of that. He invites us to experience him that way. And today, I'm going to uh, give thanks again And uh, basically what I'm going to say is I am thankful that Jesus, the Son of God, is A, alive today, he's risen from the dead, he is alive, and he is desiring and able and willing to be our sympathetic, caring advocate. Look at Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4, it's talking about Christ being our great high priest. There's no longer a human priest that has to go into the temple with the blood sacrifice. Jesus is the great high priest. He shed his own blood as a substitute for our sins. He paid the penalty for those, and so now he is our great high priest. But did he just rise from the dead, appear to some people, ascend into heaven and say, I'll see you in heaven. No, he is active, vigilantly active even today as what the scriptures call our advocate. And how thankful I am. Look at what Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 through 16 says. It says this, Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens. Who is that? He says, Jesus, the Son of God. Okay, what about it? Let us hold fast to our confession. Basically, we believe when we placed our trust in Christ that that is who Christ is. That's a confession of who Christ is. Let us hold fast to that confession that he died for our sins, that he paid the penalty for us, that he rose from the grave, We believe that. That's our confession. Okay, reading on. Verse 15. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted, just as we are, yet was without sin. Verse 16. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. So verse 14 states the fact. We have a great high priest. His name is Jesus. He is the only high priest. Verse 15. And this high priest isn't some high priest that's sitting up in heaven looking down upon us and saying, what a bunch of foolish people. No, he actually came to earth. And in every respect was tempted just as we are. Yet in order to become a perfect sacrifice, he did not sin. And then verse 16 is the so what. Based on this reality of who Jesus is and what he has experienced, this is what you're called to do. And this is what you're able to do. And that's what I'm so thankful for. This passage states that you and I can draw near to the God of the universe with Jesus being our advocate. And as his advocate, do we find judgment? Do we find anger? No, we find mercy and grace that can help us during our times of need. Now, now please, don't under, please understand what this, this passage does not say. When you, when you hear the word advocate, or as one person says, uh, our go-between, uh, you got to be very, very careful that you understand what we're talking about there. Because sometimes, depending on how you were raised, your background, it could easily be the sense that, well, 
God is the angry bad guy, and we're the victims, and Jesus is the good guy that stands between the bad guy and the victim. You, you see this all the time in alcoholic families, dysfunctional families. One of the parents comes home, usually the male, comes home drunk as a skunk, and, and basically because they're so inebriated, they don't know what they're doing, and if their nature is violence, then they become violent. And many times that violence is either directed at a wife or a child. And many times in those dysfunctional situations, as that violence escalates, and especially if there's physical harm taking place, one of the children, many times the older one, will try to jump in between them in order to protect mom as her advocate. That is not the picture we have here. There's several things wrong with that kind of picture. First, you and I aren't victims. We are the sinners against a holy God. The Bible says all of us have sinned, fallen short of God's glory. And our consciences tell us plainly that we have not even lived up to our own standards, let alone God's standards. The second thing wrong with that picture of that, that being an advocate is that Jesus did not force himself between us and God. Uh, he didn't jump in to wrestle God away from us against God's will. God actually put Jesus between us and himself. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. That whoever believes on him might have everlasting life. So Christ being our advocate was God's idea. He took the initiative to make a way for sinners to come to him as Christ paid the penalty for our sins. One last thing that's wrong with that picture is that God is not impulsive or rash or reckless or crazy at an instant. He is perfectly righteous, completely just, infinitely holy and pure, the Bible says. He upholds his law with unimpeachable equity and integrity. There's no shady deals whatsoever. John 1 5, 1 John 1 5, God is light, and in him is no darkness whatsoever. That's why we need an advocate. Your iniquities, Isaiah 59 says, has separated you and your God. Your sins have hid his face from you. Isaiah 59 2. God, God is like a blazing fire of light and truth and righteousness. And you and I are broken and, and dark and dead in our sins. And so God sends an advocate, his son. The son takes on human nature. That's Christmas. He lives a perfect life, even though he was tempted in every way. And he dies as our substitute to pay the penalty for our sins. That's Good Friday. And then he rises from the dead. That's Easter. To prove that he has power and victory over death. And so Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Jesus is the only true advocate between myself, yourself, and God. Only Jesus can bring us to God. The Apostle Paul says we are reconciled to God by the death of his son, Romans 5.10. Only Jesus can save us from the separation and alienation that cuts us off from God. Acts chapter 4, there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. So it's either Jesus as your advocate or alienation from God. There's no other choice. And so Jesus came into the world, took on human nature, 
our weaknesses, our pain, our death. He was tested in every way, just like you and I are, and yet did so without sin. And since he didn't sin, he can be a perfect high priest, a perfect advocate on our behalf. And since he suffered and was tempted and tested, he can be a sympathetic advocate. He can come to you and look at you and says, I've been there. I've been there. It's always easier to share your heart with someone that you know has been through a very similar thing that you have been. And you can be much more sympathetic towards a person who's sharing something with you when in your mind you're saying, I know exactly what you're talking about because I've been there. I've been there. And so he can be as an advocate because he paid the penalty for our sin, and he can be a sympathetic advocate because I took on human nature, and I lived the same life and walked the same walk as you're explaining. And so we're not approaching someone angry. Look at verse 15. We do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet was without sin. R. Kent Hughes says this about that word sympathetic or sympathy. He says, Jesus, our high priest, has an unequaled capacity to offer sympathy. It goes far beyond an intellectual kind of sympathy because it's truly experiential. Jesus does not just imagine how you must feel. He actually feels it. The word for sympathize in the original language means to share an experience with someone else. And so it's not merely a mental, oh, you must be hurting. It's no, I know how you are hurting because I have been there as well. Whatever we may be going through, there is not a note we can play, not a melody we can sing, no minor key that we can play that does not evoke a sympathetic resonance in Jesus. Our can use continues, he mastered the instrument while he was here on earth, and he wears it as he is exalted in heaven. Do you want to experience the utmost of sympathy? Don't go anywhere else. Dare not go to anywhere else. Because Jesus can sympathize with you more deeply than anyone else can. And so Jesus truly understands your pain, he understands your need, your emotions, your struggles, your fears, your concerns. You don't have to go to him like a whimpering puppy. I wonder, I wonder how, what the response is going to be. The response is going to be, I understand. I understand. And then verse 16 offers us this amazing invitation. This amazing invitation, because it's amazing because of absolutely who you're talking about here. This is the God of the universe, the holy, righteous God. And the invitation is, come right up to my throne. Come right up to my throne. Look at verse 16. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. First of all, it's not a throne of judgment. It's not a throne of anger. It's not a throne of condemnation. The scriptures say for those who know Christ, it is a throne of grace. Condemnation has been turned into grace. And so it's not a throne of judgment that you're being invited to. It's a throne of grace. And he says, draw near. 
God says, nope, I'm not going to make you stay 30 feet away. I want you to draw near to me. And that only is allowed because of Jesus. And he says, not only draw near, but draw near with confidence. No hesitation, no reluctance. No, I, I hope God is going to be okay with me today. No, he says, draw near with confidence. Don't be reluctant. Don't be hesitant. It's a throne of grace. If you know Christ, it's a throne of grace. The term translated, by the way, here, confidence, where it says, draw near with confidence, has a long documented history in the original language of what Hebrews was written in, known as the Greek, Koine Greek. And basically what this meant back in the day when this was written, I quote, free and open speech of citizens with one another. Now, sort of unlike our culture today, you know, where if you say the wrong thing, I'm not going to listen to you. No, it's free and open speech, one person to another. This is interesting. This word, confidence, was never used in any of the Greek literature that described prayer to a pagan god. Rather, it was the Jews who first began to use it in the Greek Old Testament to describe prayer. It means boldly, an open outpouring of the heart, one person to the other. There's no suggestion of disrespect here, but simply that we are to come to God without hesitation, without tentativeness. This is one of the grand, grand invitations that you and I can spirit. And then where are we supposed to draw? To the throne of grace. Throne of grace. And at that throne of grace, what do you find? You find an, an angry father who throws up his hands and says, oh, for Pete's sake, not again. No, it says, you may receive mercy and find grace to help you during your times of need. Not just when you have it all okay. During your time of need, draw close to me. God's big enough. He, he can take it. He can take your honesty. This is how I'm really feeling. These are the questions I really have. These are the things that frustrate me. These are the things that seem unfair. God says, draw near. Come to the throne of grace. And so, as I think about Thanksgiving, I think about Psalm 91, that during these crazy circumstances, the chaos that's going on, all the uncertainty that's out there. I'm just so thankful that we're invited to draw near, which basically means enter into the presence of God through Christ, experience my shelter, experience refuge, experience me as being a strong fortress when you're feeling super weak, a shield that completely surrounds you. And then secondly, I just give thanks that through Christ I can experience God's tremendous grace and mercy during my times of need. And that Christ, because he lived a sinless life and paid the penalty for my sins, is my advocate to the Heavenly Father. So that instead of experiencing condemnation and judgment, I experience grace and mercy, even during those dark times of need in my life.
Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we have so many riches of blessings to give you thanks for. for. Some of them are extremely simple, very practical, because your word says that every good and perfect gift comes from you. So just the reality that I am here, able to take a breath of air is a gift. Something as simple as that, all the way to the complex. And Lord, I pray that in the midst of our Thanksgiving festivities, we will enjoy our time with other people. We will enjoy a a day free from work in order to uh, set aside time to give thanks. But Lord, I also pray that we will be reminded of the tremendous blessings that comes from the heavenly realms that's only available to those who know Christ. And so, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and pray that your word would not just inform us this morning, but transform us. We pray this in Jesus' name. This passage said, an invitation, come draw near to me. Uh, One of the fantastic ways we do that is through prayer. So we're going to practice We're going to practice right now as one of our elders, George Blom, comes up and uh, leads us in a time of prayer for the church family. light on, but hey, hey, magic. All right, I'm George Blom, one of the elders, and uh, I am going to invite us into a time of prayer, and I'm going to do it, um, you know, it's Thanksgiving week, and uh, maybe you're like us. We had a we had a Thanksgiving yesterday canceled. We're not even sure we should do the next one, and um, you know, I'll, I'll tell you I'm going to pray different, and I'm doing that for my own heart. I, I look around, and uh, the thankfulness is hard for me to feel at this moment. Um, but I'm going to try to pray, praying thankfulness, even for, we have people that are, that are uh, broken, we have uh, really hard things to pray for, but I'm going to try to do it in a way uh, that, that takes my heart and changes my focus from the, the events, the, si- the situation, and turn it back to God. So, um, Psalm 100, verse 4, enter his gates with thanksgiving, go into his courts with praise, Give thanks to him and praise his name. So just like Dane talked, we're just going to come and pray. And I would just ask you um, to enter God's courts with praise. And in our our struggles, and I'm going to share some things that it's going to be really hard for me to pray a thankfulness for it. But I am going to try. And uh, with grace, hopefully God will know what I'm trying to do. So let's just close uh, your eyes and focus on him. Lord, we thank you for your name. We thank you for this opportunity today to either watch from home, to come here and be a part of a a body that, Lord, wants to lift up your name as our Savior, as our Rescuer. Uh, Lord, with mercy and grace, you came for us, Lord, and that is worth being thankful for. Lord, help us today as, as we struggle with decisions. We struggle with what we could be with family and what might not be. We struggle with decisions on our activities. Lord, just give us wisdom, but help us to focus on you at this time of thanksgiving. It's a time to be thankful for who you are. It's a time to reflect on your word and the truth that Dane gave us today, the truth of who you are. You are are on your throne and that you have rescued us, Lord. Lord, I have a lot of praises today. Marcia Aguilar was... Uh, able to get out of Venezuela, which is uh, not easy. Lord, your hand was with her. Lord, we pray as she uh, seeks medical treatment for what she has. Lord, just ask that that will be a blessing. Pray for uh, Guillermo to be uh, uh, focused on you and trusting that that his uh, wife where she needs to be and he is where he needs to be, carrying the gospel forward to the lost people of Venezuela. Lord, I, 
I uh, also thank you for uh, Jake uh, Anderson and their family to be back. Pray for uh, just R&R for them to reconnect with their family. Lord, just pray a blessing on them as uh, they just have time. Uh, Lord, just uh, lift them up to you. Lord, I, I pray and thank you for Zach Mendonca, the life that he lived, a life well lived for those that invested in him. I thank you that we can remember him as a, as a young man on fire for you, faithful, faithful to carry that forward. Lord, and I thank you that we have him to remember. And I pray a peace to come to the Vendanslers. They have family events and Thanksgiving and Christmas and these times, Lord. May we continue to remember them, listen to them, and be with them and hug them. Lord, pray for the uh, uh, Jerry Hackert. And I thank you for the Hackerts who have been just this legacy of, of life uh, and investing in others. Pray for Jerry as he gets uh, treatment and mercy for a heart condition and Lord, we know that, uh, you know, he is uh, well-loved by his wife. He is well-loved by his family. Lord, just be with them this time. Give the doctors wisdom. Pray for Stacy Paxton and uh, that she has the ability to uh, thank you that she can be at Mayo and, and receive a heart valve transplant. Lord, I know that's a scary thing. Lord, I just uh, pray for a peace to come to them. Thank you that, uh, Lord, you've given doctors and wisdom and, and treatment that, that she can pursue. Lord, uh, uh, pray. Uh, Lord, I, I pray for uh, Karen Dykstra. Thank you that she is a shining example of a godly woman who fully trusts in you as her Savior and Lord. And as she seeks treatment for cancer, Lord, she continues to have that, that smile and that energy. Lord, pray for her and her family. Lord, just ask that you will wrap them up in your love and your care. And thank you for who she is. Lord, I pray for the uh, Beltman family, for Tilly, who, who uh, quietly, what a sweet woman, uh, came to your presence yesterday. I thank you for her example of um, just a woman that loved you. I thank you for a family that loved her enough to sacrifice their own time. Well done to Susie and Doyle and the entire Beltmans to love on her to carry her back. And I pray for so many that here care for aging parents and decisions and those that we love. Give us your grace, Lord. Help us to carry them as they've carried us. Be with uh, the Beltmans as they uh, celebrate a life. Lord, as uh, they do that, may they be thankful that they had a mom that loved you so much. Lord, I pray today um, and thank you for uh, Matt and Mandy Poulter, I thank you for their heart for orphans, not just a heart for it, Lord, they're in practice, they're starting and continuing to carry that uh, who is important to you, the lost, the orphans, the forgotten, and that they are caring for them around the world. And Lord, I thank you, and I pray for Mandy as she has treatment, and I pray for just success. I pray for us to continue to remember the lost and that those that are with us, I pray as the Lord, uh, you just help that treatment to be successful in everything that we have. Lord, uh, thanks for Dale Vandenbrook to continue to recover. Pray for him to be healthy and strong. He's not done. Lord, I just lift up today the amazing grace and blood that you've shed for us. Help us to come to you now. Help us to come and worship out of thanksgiving of our heart for your blessings, for who you are and how you've rescued us. Lord, I thank you for the worship team. I thank you for their gifts and their talents, and may we, Lord, raise our voice to you. In your name we pray, amen. Let's stand again this morning. Sing about the goodness of God. You're all smiling out there, right?
From the moment that I wake up Until I lay in my head I will sing of the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful Of the goodness of God I love your voice You have led me through the fire In darkest night You are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend I have lived in the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am made for I will sing of the goodness of God Your goodness is running after It's running after of the goodness of God. But your love is the 
I mean, we don't, we're not allowed to chant, but you are allowed to say amen. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Uh, just a reminder, I, I'm not in charge, which is a good thing. I have no clue what to do with the boxes, but if you hang out in the lobby, I'm sure there's going to be someone that will tell you how to get the boxes to the trailers. Thanks to Doug Wiley and Doug Adama, who are going to be taking those trailers down to Ottumwa tomorrow. If you forgot your box today, that's fine. Bring it here tomorrow morning, and they'll be able to get her where it needs to go. So, Joe began with Psalm 107. I'm going to close with Psalm 108. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing praise to you among the nations. For your steadfast love is great above the heavens, your faithfulness that reaches to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, even above the heavens. Let your glory be experienced over the entire earth. On behalf of the uh, staff and the leadership at Liberty Evangelical Free Church, 
we would like to wish each and every one of you a very, very blessed Thanksgiving. God bless you. You are dismissed at this time, and uh, have a great week. Thank you.